primary. He had embarrassed himself in Iowa and in New Hampshire and in Nevada. And then he came roaring back. And so this has been a, a you know, one heck of a r roller coaster ride. And you've got to sort of be patient with people who believe that the last curve in the roller coaster may not have been seen yet. Now, you know, there are uh, still uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of delegates up for grabs. Uh, there is a massive health crisis that really, frankly, speaks to the need for us to have health care for all in this country. And uh, there's an absolute need for the party to be prepared to come together this fall. If you were to see Bernie Sanders fold right now, you would see a lot of young people walk away from this party. Uh, it's not that just that they feel like he's been disrespected. They feel like they've been disrespected. And when, when you saw moderates start to call for canceling primaries, frankly, uh, that um, plays right into the hands of Donald Trump, who, if we see a second spike in COVID come this fall, could be suggesting that we try to put off the national e election. Now, he has no constitutional way to do that, but that's never stopped him from trying to build a movement for a crazy idea that's dangerous to our country. So we, as a Democratic Party, have to embrace democracy. We need to make sure that uh, everybody's voice is heard, and we've got to listen to every generation. And that means that Joe Biden, who's almost universally lost young people so far, needs to listen to young people and to embrace at least one of the big ideas that is so central to why they're voting and what they're voting for. Well, Ben Jealous, we certainly appreciate you taking the time under what are difficult circumstances I know for all concerned. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's been a real joy to be with you. Now, at the beginning of the show, I pointed to China's supposed 35 new cases of COVID-19 today. And so cynical. Trump. I know. I've been expressing a few doubts about those Chinese figures for some time now. And part of the reason that people do trust them is because this guy vouched for them. One of the leaders of the World Health Organization, Dr. Bruce Eilward. He's been very positive about China. He says he didn't see anything that suggested manipulation of numbers when he visited China. But people are starting to get a little bit suspicious about that guy. This week, a clip came out of a Hong Kong reporter wanting to ask him about Taiwan being admitted to the WHO, something that China very much doesn't want. And this is how he reacted. Would the WHO consider Taiwan's membership? Hello? We, would it, would I'm it sorry, I can't hear you. I couldn't hear your question. Okay, yeah, let me, let, let me, let me repeat the question. No, so. that's okay. Let, let's move to another one then. Right, because, because I'm, I'm actually curious on talking about Taiwan as well, on Taiwan's case. Okay, so not exactly subtle there. There's a few people at the moment questioning exactly what's going on with that guy. But let's just think about this for a second. If China really only had 35 new cases in its entire country yesterday, then why did it totally lock down Henan province? Not to mention, it also shut down a bunch of activities in Shanghai and Sichuan province as well. All that for 35 cases across the whole country? Well, American intelligence doubts it. They supposedly have a classified report that says China is systematically underreporting both total cases and deaths that it has suffered. And while I'm not normally super trustworthy about US intelligence either, or anonymously sourced newspaper articles, China itself has admitted this week that it has more than 1,500 people who were infected with the virus but haven't shown symptoms that were not included in their stats. That's not overall, that's just right now. And they said that they would start to report infected people without symptoms beginning Wednesday. Whereas other countries have been doing that the whole time. We're talking about 25% of cases there that China is completely not reporting until now. But why does this matter? Well, firstly, uh, countries like America are trying to learn from China's experience to plan what they're going to do. And if China's been lying, that stuffs everyone up. Secondly, if the World Health Organization is sucking up to China at Taiwan's expense, that means back in December, 
when Taiwan warned the WHO that coronavirus could be passed by human-to-human -human contact, China denied it, and so Taiwan's warnings were not shared with the rest of the world by WHO. That cost the world a month. And how many tens of thousands of deaths? We don't know. And by the way, one more little thing. Those wet markets that China had where they sold all the animals all stacked mm. up together, that, that's where people think this thing started. Well, China's just reopened those markets and they're selling bats again, the animal that coronavirus may well have come from. Now, we're not 100% sure about that, by the way, but nevertheless, I thought it might be worth mentioning. Yeah, I heard the armadillos were involved in some <laughs> way as well. But that is all for this week's Fireside Chat. Thank you for tuning in on ABC News and News Radio. We're taking a couple of Fridays off the air over the Easter break, but only for the Friday show. We will have an all-new Planet America on Wednesday night at the all-new time of 9.30pm on ABC TV. And, of course, you'll find more on Facebook, YouTube and iView, including bonus interviews and the podcast extra that I make with Dr. David Smith. We talk about all the things we don't talk about on this show. You should, you should listen to it and watch it. It's on all the usual podcast platforms. Now, during this epidemic, Chaz, we have seen a lot of things to make us very concerned, very worried, like Tiger King, for instance. Oh, no. And uh, a few You're things not, as well uh, out there no. to give us a sense of, of hope and positivity, like those Italians singing from their balcony as well. In New York City this week, at 7pm each night, they have been stopping, getting out on their balconies and applauding medical and care workers. We'll leave you with the sound of New Yorkers' gratitude. Good night. Right.